I want you to meet Kelly Everts. Kelly's a stripper. Kelly got the attention of this audience, I'll tell you. Here is a woman who lights up a room. You've been featured in over 30 magazines, and you reside in Manhattan. What is your bra size? 400 magazines, and I live in Brooklyn. My bra size is 46 double D. Well, we... <laughs> well, Brooklyn wants to claim you, I'm sure. Uh, and you, I'm sorry to put you in the wrong bureau. A borough. What's the matter? Are you well, nervous? isn't that where you put a bra in a bureau? <laughs> and you like your you like your body, don't you, Kelly? Well, my breasts and my body have been a weapon and uh, sort of uh, a blessing, sometimes a curse. But I've made a living from my body and my breasts. You've all my had life. no surgery. This is you, huh? Yes, absolutely. You must have went nuts in high school, huh? Well, uh, yeah, I got a I lot mean, of. I wasn't it a little rough walking down the hallway between classes? It's worse now. It seems to be uh, like I've gotten bigger. You know, I've gained weight. I see. I used to weigh very little. Then. But the point is, uh, you 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 make your living as a stripper, and uh, as last time I looked, this is still legal, even though Ed Meese is Attorney General. Apparently, you can still strip in the United States of America. So nobody's going to accuse you of breaking the law. And this is who you are, and you're proud of yourself. I'm. I don't know. I'm asking. Uh, yes, I'm very happy that I have large breasts because the bigger the breasts are, the more money we can make in the strip teasing business. And I appear in all the men's magazines regularly, like Fling, Chen, Big Boobs, uh, Big boobs. Double D Cup, <laughs> and right. so forth. Big Boobs, actually, we get that at home. That comes in. <laughs> uh, there's uh, let me... a lot of breast paranoia, you know. There is? People are very interested in breasts. Both uh, Breasts are the biggest fetish in the United States and I Canada. Agree. Over 90% of all men are breast men and mama's boys. <laughs> the mammary gland has become the hallmark of our culture. There's no question about it. We sell everything with uh, the breast. Cinder DeStefano is here uh, at 5'2 and 115 pounds. She has a 36C bra size. And you're honest to tell us uh, that this, this has influenced you emotionally, hasn't it? I see you're dressed down today. Yes. And you probably do that all the time, huh? Uh -huh. It's really ironic, isn't it, that here we are into the, uh, into the culture of the big boob, and you've got them, and you don't want to show them off. No, I think that having large breasts can put you into a stereotype. In a lot of ways, a lot of people think, well, she can't be smart, too. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, I've always felt out of proportion. I, for one, you know, this is just a personal preference, don't think that they're particularly attractive. I prefer the more sleek look. Isn't it? Funny? What do they look like? Yeah, <laughs> smaller than yours. <laughs> uh, let, let's understand what we're. Uh, this, well, you were, I assume you were a teenager when you said, holy cow, why are all these boys coming on to me? Is that how this happened? Yes. And you didn't like it. You felt uncomfortable. No, right. Uh, they were interested in you for your body, not your personhood. Yes. Not everybody, but, you know, I was faced with that somewhat. Yeah. Uh, you probably aren't even capable of wearing a low-cut garment with your husband. I see you have a wedding ring. Mm hmm You don't even want to do that, do you? No. Have you thought about breast reduction? Yes. Uh, you, you're a little shy, like most of us. I mean, it sounds like a big deal to me, this surgery. I haven't thought too seriously about it yet. Um, I thought I would, you know, I'm not terribly uncomfortable by them. I don't have the trenches in my shoulders or anything like some people do, but I thought I'd wait a few years to see if gravity, <coughs> excuse me, really took over, got the best of me. Go uh -huh. have them rehung and resized all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brian, let's go all the way to the end of here and meet Marion Rock, because she has had breast reduction, true? Yes, I have. You are a dentist in New York City. Yes, I am. Uh, did you have the ridges in your shoulders about which... Uh, yeah, to an extent. It wasn't as drastic as, as many people that I've seen, but certainly they were there, and uh, they were very uncomfortable. Um, you, you get other, other types of, of, of problems, physical ailments, you, I don't recall that. You can't jog, can you, or couldn't? I could jog with a very, very powerful bra on, you know what I mean? But it wasn't uh, comfortable? Or it, not... wasn't, it was not comfortable. 
Um, it wasn't comfortable f for me at, at many times, you know. It was very uncomfortable. The type of work that I do, I, I, I take positions, I'm bent over, I, you know, my breasts are in somebody's face or in the <laughs> ear or whatever it is, you know. And, um, uh, I You'd have people coming back who had no cavities, wouldn't you? Well, I got people coming back. To, yeah. You know, I had... I used to joke about being a topless dentist, <laughs> by the way, you know. Yeah. But um, uh, I'd have no problem keeping mouths open, you know. Yeah. But uh, in any case, it, it isn't very comfortable. It wasn't comfortable for me. And I, I looked into it. I investigated it. I found out what the operation was about. And um, I did it. I'm very happy with it. I'm much more comfortable. You are? Yes, I am. Uh, how long was the post-op recovery period? I mean, how long are you uncomfortable? I mean, maybe about two weeks, if two weeks. Really? You know, I mean, I had it done last year, and I really can't say that I was terribly uncomfortable at all. There were certain things that I had to do to take care of myself, right. you know, but uh, I did them the same as you would do for any other kind of operation. Uh -huh. When you look at yourself in the mirror topless, can you see the scars? Uh, yes, you can. Faintly. They, they fade after a period of time, and the scars are not that bad at all. And they're both the same size? Yes, they are. <laughs> so, uh, Marion, if you had any advice to give Cinder, you would say, you know, look... I would, I would say, if you are very uncomfortable, okay, if you are experiencing chafing under the breast, if you're getting scars on your shoulders, if they start to bleed, if you get neck pain or back pain, then you owe it to yourself to investigate it. By all means, talk to several people. I, to me, had the greatest, you know, but uh, talk to people, get consultations, you know, talk to people that have had it done, and then think about it and do it if you want to. Don't hold that. Between Cinder and Marion is D. Rosine. You don't like your breasts. My, <clears throat> excuse me, my breasts are practically non-existent. <laughs> so there's You're the not other much side <laughs> of this uh, problem. Right, there's not much to like. <laughs> uh, uh huh. And how much of... Uh, you're single? No, I'm married. You're married. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of a feature of, the, uh, of being flat-chested is it, do you think about it every day or? I, every day. You do. <clears throat> I uh, walk by a window, I look at my reflection, I notice that I'm not shapely like other women are. Um, it's not so much, my husband never bothers me about this. He's completely um, satisfied with my shape. It's, it's something with myself that I'm really dissatisfied. Um, I've checked into getting an augmentation done. Right and hope to do that real soon. You do? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any, um, I suppose, uh, it's hard for me to imagine what happens uh, from a woman's point of view, but in adolescence, I assume you remember seeing all the girls begin to bloom and you weren't? Is that? Uh... It seems that I've been almost obsessed with breasts since I was a little girl. Two years old, I wanted a bra, and, um, I grew up and, of course, everybody went through the change and there I was and I stayed the same, <laughs> still the same. And I, you know, begged my mother for a, a training bra and, and stuck a little few things in there mm -hmm. to fill, to fill myself like out. Like a lot of women, you know. Right. And then you grew up to be disappointed <clears throat> in your own body. Though. Right. And it's something that, that does. It bothers me on a daily basis. Um, you know, I strive to, to uh, keep the rest of my body fit and trim. and. I feel like, you know, that much work goes into it, I should feel like I'm in the proportion. Yeah. Also here, and this is not so funny, this is Vicki Guest, a student at Fountain Valley High School in Fountain Valley, California. She's here in the company of her attorney, a woman about whom you've certainly read and perhaps seen on our program, among others. Gloria Allred accompanies Vicki. She is an attorney who represents Vicki in a suit against the, uh, school system, they wouldn't let her be a cheerleader because her breasts were too large, quote, unquote. Um, you must have been, uh, what, hurt, angry, confused? What were you in that? Who said this to you, Vicki? Um, the cheerleading advisor of Fountain High School. I had tried out for cheerleading, 
went through a week of clinics and tried out on Saturday to find out at the end of the day when they pushed them that I didn't make it. And, you know, she said before that, before we auditioned that if we wanted to find out why we didn't make it, that was fine. And from being a dancer and performing a lot, I wanted to see what I needed to work on in order to make a career out of it. Right. And so I went in there Monday after school and she sat me down and she told me that I had like one of the best teacher recommendations that my skills and talent and ability were fine and that the reason why I didn't make cheerleading because my breasts were too large. And then she recommended breast reduction surgery oh before my. going on with my career so I wouldn't be discriminated against it by this. And I was really shocked. I was really confused. I didn't think that that would ever be the reason why I didn't make it. Yeah. A couple of things here, Vicki. First of all, Kelly Everts, you're not never will be you don't think of yourself as exceptionally busty do you well i didn't before but after she had said this to me i believed her i felt that i was really insecure i felt that she was right and i found myself in dance wearing sweatshirts more and really trying to hide how old are you women did the same thing to me when i was young you know, they always picked on me, they persecuted me, and they hated me, and I got such an inferiority complex. You went the other way. And I thought that there was something really wrong with me. There was nothing wrong with me. The only thing was I attracted so many men that they hated me and they were jealous of me, you know. Right. And so then they pick on you because they hate you and they're jealous. Well, let us remember, <clears throat> Kelly, that not everybody wants to resolve this kind of unfair prejudice by becoming a stripper. Uh, but, but, it's, but there's nothing wrong with being a stripper either. I don't know. I'm really, I feel like I'm walking on a razor blade here. Uh, well, listen, before we, uh, let's understand that. How'd you like this to happen to your daughter? Imagine how enraged you would be. Miss Allred, how, what's the, uh, what are you saying here in this suit? I'm saying, Phil, that I think it's wrong for the size or shape of a young woman's breast to be uh, given as a reason or used as a reason to exclude this young woman from any school activity. I think that it should be totally irrelevant uh, as to wh what the size or shape of her breasts are, and I think that no young child should be subjected to that kind of standard as to whether or not she can participate. Yeah. Also, it, you know, so many people, in fact, I think every woman that I know has been very sensitive about the size and shape of her breasts as, she, as she's growing up. She thinks she's too big, she thinks she's too small, she thinks she's too round or she's too oblong or whatever. And to say something like that to a young person is really possibly leaving scars that are going to be lifelong. It's very traumatic and women are very sensitive. Like this young woman said, every day she thinks about the size of her breasts. Can we, and if a person in authority says that, like a teacher, it's particularly devastating. And, and Vicki was traumatized. Yeah. You know what? I bet I could argue this for Fountain Valley High School. Let me try. I'm not an attorney, and this is a little bit pushy of me to assume I could. But here's what I'll bet they're going to say. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, a cheerleader by definition is a person who steps in front of the boosters of the high school basketball, football team, whatever it may be. And we assume, by virtue of the nature of this function, a certain cosmetic appearance. Now, would Miss Allred bring a lawsuit against this school board if, in behalf of a 250 pound, 5 foot 2 inch person, woman, student member who wants to be a cheerleader? Maybe. Well, what kind of country do you want then? I want a country where. Do you want a, an ob obviously obese young woman? to be yelled at and whistled at by males in the audience while she waddles out there and presumes to cheerlead? <laughs> Miss Allred is using the law to heap further humiliation on young women. And if we accept that cheerleaders are supposed to be attractive, and if one cheerleader has breasts which move in various directions during drawing the attention of the male, she's going to be victimized by more humiliation because of a woman who insists on bringing litigation on her behalf. Now, how would you respond to that argument? I want a country where young people can feel comfortable as they are. They don't have to fit a stereotype. That's the kind of country that I want. I want a country where every woman doesn't have to feel that she's inadequate because she's not Dolly Parton or inadequate because she doesn't look like Twiggy. 
She doesn't have to be anorexic to be beautiful. She doesn't have to be Dolly Parton to be beautiful. She's beautiful as she is. And I've gone to... Do you want, And yet, Phil, a 250-pound person can be beautiful, too. Why can't women who are heavier than this norm that we have in this country, and I'd like to know where this norm comes from, why can't women who are heavier than the norm or not as heavy as the norm be happy and be considered beautiful, too? This applause means you disagree with my argument. <laughs> uh, Yes, ma'am. Um, also, what has to come into play here is that what skills does the cheerleader have to do? Does she have to uh, do a cartwheel, a somersault, or whatever? Those things are very important. And if the, the obese woman cannot do those certain skills, then uh, that's what she should be judged on, not on whether or not she's so fat or athletic, whatever. Uh, athletic so skill might get... Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we say, is the skills should be the main thing. What kind of representative are they going to be of the school? Now, in Vicky's case, Vicky was a cheerleader in elementary school and junior high school. She is so good at dance, in fact, that she's won a scholarship from the very own school, which wouldn't let her be a cheerleader. I'm glad you waited. Go ahead. Yes, um, sir, I hate my breasts. I absolutely hate them. Why? I have 38 double D. I have, I'm a nurse in a hospital. I always have to get uniforms that zip up the front because the buttons pull apart. I'm going to a plastic surgeon. He says that he'd be glad to do my breast and even give me a discount, but he said that I should wait until I'm married and have children because they're only going to get bigger again. Yeah. Uh, Marion, can you nurse if you wish to have ch a child? Could you nurse? Uh, no, I cannot. And But the thing is, it, it wasn't a factor for me. I mean... Well, you weren't uh, interested in child nursing. Well, it's not that. No, not oh, at all. Oh, you weren't interested in nursing. No, it's not That's that. Good. What I'm saying is that if I wanted to have a child, you know, I could have a child, I can give the child a bottle, you know. I mean, I would be willing to give this up, you know. Right. It's not... Uh, How old is the caller? I am 33 years old. Right. Uh -huh. you know, Phil, a lot of women who get breast reduction surgery actually do it because they have ugly breasts, because they look like sacks hanging down. And then they brag about this breast reduction surgery, and what they're really doing is beautifying the breasts by lifting them and making them more, yeah. more That's pretty. That's not necessarily so. Not necessarily, but a lot of them. I, let I me, know uh, a few. Let me well, check. I know many that, uh, you know, have very beautiful breasts. I considered my breasts beautiful also. <laughs> no. <laughs> You know, the thing is, what was bothering me, I did not have, you see, I was not accustomed What size were you, they want to yeah. know, What Mary. size was I? Well, I would never admit my well, size right. before. You know, no, what I'm saying is that, that, uh, I had, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, I had, I had smooth skin, okay, I didn't have a lot of wrinkles or anything like that, my breast sag. I was not accustomed to scars on any part of my body. So I was concerned about that. But it was not only the lifting of it so that I could go around without a bra, it was taking them in so that I would not be physically uncomfortable. Okay? It was, an act, it was physically uncomfortable for me, and it's physically uncomfortable for many women. Why should we go around with pain? You know, it's more than the cosmetic aspect of it that we're dealing yeah. with. The medical aspect. Please let me get Vicki's parents in here. Uh, what uh, parent cannot identify with how you must have felt? Mm -hmm. Ann and Jim uh, guess. You had to be really upset. Very, Tell was, me. I was very upset because in today's age, uh, teenage suicide is number yeah. one. Yeah. We're fighting anorexia, bulimia, and it's all because of the way teenagers yeah. see their body. And here was a teacher telling my daughter, that her body was not okay and would not be okay yeah. unless she had surgery. Yeah. And this is, as we say, uh, a good girl. I mean, you, this is a student who uh, met her responsibilities. Right, and Vicki has won many competitions, and she had the skills. And the teacher also told her, don't try out for anything else unless you have the surgery and have it done soon. And I think that's a dangerous policy, and I think it should be changed. Yeah. I thank you for waiting. Go ahead. Good morning. Not much time, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, good morning. I would like to say that as a 28-year-old single male, I find that the smaller the breast, the better. 
You do find that, do you? Well, quite. A, a lot of people, a lot of my friends, uh, yeah. to be specific, right. are intensely... It's for minority. Yeah. Well, minority. Uh, they're very intensely, uh, shall we say, aggravated by... He's probably into breath. young girls. No, don't say that. That Now, see, see. He has a daughter fetish. Yeah. Well, we thank you for, we thank you for your call. Good day. He, good day. Yeah, what? I don't know what happened to the teacher. If it was anything... Is the teacher in anything, uh, Miss Allred? The matter is still in litigation. We just filed a lawsuit in October. Uh, the teacher is still teaching there. Uh, they uh, deny... There's a general denial that's been issued in the litigation. But I hope and I expect that this will have a very salutary effect on the school district that uh, I do not believe that they will dare to do this again to any other young girl. We're in New York City and we'll be back in just a moment.